In this video on 1.1 vectors, we will take a look at exercises 3 and 4. In exercise 3, we have a vector v going from point A to point B. We want to sketch all of that information. So we have the point A is at 3, 1, and point B is at negative 1, 4. And the direction does matter. We have the vector going from A to B like this. And so we can simply count, if we were to make a right triangle, we can count the number of spaces knowing that we are going left and up, and so that we get vector a, sorry, vector v is going to be the change in x from a to b, and the change in y from a to b, which gives us 1, 2, 3, 4 to the left, or negative 1 minus 3 is negative 4 for the delta x, and we are rising or increasing by 3 for the y, because we have 4 minus 1. So we have the components of v. Um, we want all of the components, so not just the horizontal and the vertical, i.e. the base and the height with direction, but also the angle in standard position. So if we were to imagine that point A is the translated origin, then we will have a standard position angle theta, and we will also have a radius or magnitude. So the radius or magnitude of the vector, we might simply call it v, is going to be given by the square root of the delta x plus the square root of the delta y all squared. Sorry, squ uh, yeah. Well, you know what it says right there. And we're going to get 5 because this is the classic 3, 4, 5 Pythagorean triple. We can get the reference angle, which is inside the triangle here. I'll measure it in green. And that reference angle is going to be given by the tan inverse of the absolute value of delta y over delta x, so it's 3 over f negative 4, which gives us tan inverse of 3 fourths for the reference angle. And therefore, the angle is in quadrant 2 because we have a negative x and a positive y component. And so we will take pi and subtract the reference angle to get the actual angle of the vector. So those are all the four components, uh, the two rectangular and the two polar components. Now we want to sketch vector v using point p, uh, which is negative 2 comma negative 3, as a terminal point. So I'm going to plot negative 2 comma negative 3 here, and I'm going to copy my vector and paste it so that I know it's exactly the right vector. And when I translate it, I don't change the vector. I just change the initial point and the terminal point. So I'm going to call my initial point here q, and I know that to go from q to p, I go left. Therefore, to go from p to q, I go right. And I go right by the amount of spaces given by vector v. So I'm going to go 4 to the right of negative 2, which gives me an x co coordinate of 2. And I'm also going down from point p to point q by 3 spaces. So I get that point Q is located at 2 comma negative 6. And that's my part B of the question. Part C, I want to sketch vector V um, using a variable point, A comma B, as the initial point. And to come up with the new terminal point, I know that I have a certain change. And the change that I have is 4 spaces to the left and 3 spaces to the right. So if my initial point is a comma b. To get the final x coordinate, we subtract 4. And to, from the initial y coordinate, we add 3. And it's getting crowded on my grid, so I'm not going to put that picture there. I'll just leave it off. And then in part d, we want to sketch vector v in standard position. So we're going to paste it one more time. Standard position means that we are going to start at the vector at the origin. And so placing that vector with an initial point at the origin tells me that I have the same terminal coordinates as the actual components of the vector themselves. So the terminal point is going to be negative 4, comma 3. In exercise 4, we are asked if the two vectors v and u are equivalent. Now vector v is given in polar form, but vector u is given as um, a directed line segment between two points. So I'm going to call it vector AB or simply vector U, which is going to be my delta X comma delta Y, again using rectangular brackets for the rectangular components. And so we take the X final minus X initial is going to be 3 root 3 minus 8 root 3, 
which is negative 5 of these root 3 things. And the delta y is going to be negative 1 minus 4, which is negative 5. And then we have vector v, which is given in polar form. And one of the easiest ways to compare is if the two vectors are in the same form. So I'm going to convert polar form into rectangular form. Uh, first of all, I know that my blue vector has both x and y components are negative, and the red vector with an angle in quadrant 3 will also have negative x and y components. So we take the magnitude times the cosine of the angle for the x component, and the magnitude times the sine of the angle for the y component, and we get a reference angle of pi by 6. I'm just going to draw the reference triangle. And we see that the cosine of 7 pi by 6 is going to be root 3 over 2, but in quadrant 3 gives us a negative. And so we are going to have negative 5 root 3. Meanwhile, the sine of 7 pi by 6 will be negative 1 half. And negative 1 half of 10 is negative 5. So because the two vectors have the same rectangular components, the vectors are equivalent. Now we could also get the polar components of the blue vector. Um, which would involve using the different equations to work backwards from given the rectangular to the polar. And to do that you would use Pythagorean theorem to get the magnitude as 10, and then you would notice that we have an angle in quadrant 3. After getting the reference angle pi by 6, we would find that the actual angle in standard position is 7 pi by 6. So the reason we have equivalent vectors is because they have the same rectangular and therefore the same the they have the same and therefore the same polar components again you can use some technology to check here and if we just briefly look at uh, the TI inspire using the polar to rectangular component conversion we can take our polar magnitude and our angle of 7 pi by 6 and then we can work one at a time to get the horizontal and the vertical component and then if we work backwards then we are going from rectangular let's see if there's an arrow here I think easier if I just edit this one put rectangular here polar here, and I will get the magnitude first. Just getting clever with the editing. And so we have the magnitude, and then change this to the angle. Now this is giving us an angle of negative 5 pi by 6, which is the first negative coterminal angle to the 7 pi by 6. It is not true that 7 pi by 6 and negative pi by 6 are equal. However, it is true that if we take negative 5 pi by 6 and add 2 pi to it, it's getting a little bit lazy here, then we see we get a coterminal angle. And because the coterminal angle has the same quadrant and the same reference angle as any other coterminal angle, the sines and cosines of 7 pi by 6 and negative 5 pi by 6 are in fact equal.